Hello everybody. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how you can add information to a table into the very next row that's available into the table. It's going to be a little bit different than what I have showed in the past. In the past I've showed how you can enter data into the very next row that's available on a worksheet. And it's going to be a little bit different because when you're working with a table, you can't just add information to the next row that you see. And I'll give you a give you a few examples really quick. So if I was to click inside this table, you'll see that to my top right hand corner it says table tools. That's how you know you're working with a table. Once you select table tools, you'll see the name of the, of the table that you're working with. In this case, minus table one, or whatever name you have for your table. Now, if I also go back to this just data tab, and I click anywhere inside this data, you'll see that I don't have a table set up. There isn't anything on the top right hand corner, but if I wanted to do the same thing to this data that I did over here, where I created it into a table, all you would do is click your header row or anywhere within the, within the table, and go to your home tab, do format as table, and then select the formatting that you want. And then just check whether or not your table has headers. Mine does. So I'm going to select OK. And now we have the table tools tab that's been added. And we have the table name. That being said, let's go ahead and get started into the VBA Excel. I'm going to go to my developers tab and select Visual Basic. I had already created a macro I have named test. And the very first thing that I did is declared the three items I'd be, I would be working with, the three objects, a worksheet object, a list object, and a list row. I gave each one a name, the sheet, table list object, and table object row. Right now may be a good time for you to press pause. That way if you want to capture this screen, you, you can do so. But this is going to be the part that you'll need to customize for your own application. This, I'm going to call it the fourth line the sheet is equal to sheets and then table what's in double quotes is going to be the caption of your own sheet in this case minus table so that's the first thing that we do is we call the sheet that we're going to be working with and then we what we need to do is give the index number of the table that we're working with if your worksheet has multiple tables then you'll need to change this value right here to the index number of the table that you're working with but in this case, my sheet only has one table, so this item is just going to remain as one, index number one. Then we're, we're going to look at the table object row. And all we're going to do, though, is we're just going to add a row to the, to the row property. And then the, this is going to be the most important line, table object row dot range one comma one dot value is equal to, and then whatever item you're going to put inside your inside your row. So first off, let me show you something. If I do open parentheses after range, you'll see that it says row index or column index. Because we're looking specifically at add, we're just always going to put one in row index. That just means that you're adding it to the very next row available. Column index is just going to specify whether it's going to be A, B, C, or D, but in a numerical format. So 39611, this is going to be an item number. So I want to add that into column A. So if I also hit macros and then run the test macro, you'll see that it adds 39611 to column A. But let's just say I, I'm going to put a title instead. I'm going to put the 2 and hit F5. And I'll add the title to column B in the very next row available. So I'm going to go on and remove this. And I'm always going to put 1, 1 because that's, again, I'm going to be working with the item number. So if I hit F5, see that it's adding it? Okay. Now the next thing that we're going to need to do is add the data for columns B, C, D, E, all the way to letter I. To get this set up, what you're going to need to do is get the very last row that has data in it. So I'm going to show you this example. I'm going to put a single quote before this line so that it, we don't see any kind of code execute. If I hit F5, this is giving me the last row that does not have data in column A. And what we're going to need to do is get, I'm just going to call it last row with data variable. 
And so now what you can do is do the sheet dot range and let's say we're working with B and we're, gonna, we're just going to call this I'm going to do last row of data is equal to last row of data minus one kind of moving along here I'm going to put is equal to and then title name I'm going to hit F5 now actually I'm going to take off the single quote again do macros run I knew I was doing something a little bit wrong. Take off that minus one. It doesn't need to be there. Let me run that macro. And there you have it. So all you would do is just customize this so that it's change C, D, E, F, and G. And I'm just going to throw in some values here just so you guys can see this work. I'm going to take off those two. I'm just going to run that macro now. And there you have it. So this example is going to again give you, it's going to first give you the ability to add a row to a, t to a table. And then at that point, it's going to let you put in the remaining data for the, the last columns. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.